An urban oasis with a green sanctuary for a heart and nature coursing through its veins, supporting life of every kind. What started out as a vision 55 years ago has now blossomed into reality. But there's more to go on Singapore's greening journey. To deal with the challenges of urbanization and climate change, our island will transform into a city in nature. To achieve this, we'll tap on engineering innovations and nature-based solutions to build a more sustainable and climate-resilient home, both for our community and our rich biodiversity. But what does it really mean to live in a city in nature? Very big welcome to CNA Green Plan Challenge. Residents in three Singaporean towns are about to find out. We'll send them on journeys of discovery. Are we ready? Yeah! They will get up close and personal with nature and learn to appreciate our native treasures. We love the fruits because it's high in oil and high. We have to be grateful for what nature gave us. So many disasters, trees cannot grow, animals cannot survive, so we have to help them survive. They'll also get personally invested in our natural capital. It will grow and that's what our children will see. I'm Chen Ning and you're watching the debut episode of the CNA Green Plan Challenge. Thompson, a town enveloped by nature. Here, lush green forests and parks are just a stone's throw away. And they are teeming with life. This makes the town a good place to learn about City in Nature, one of the five pillars of the Singapore Green Plan 2013. Under this roadmap to a sustainable future, nature will be restored in the urban environment and natural habitats will be enhanced across the country. There are also plans to have every household within a 10-minute walk from a park by 2030. Our most treasured green spaces, our core biodiversity hotspots are in the heart of the city. And our challenge is to ensure that these core habitats are protected by urbanisation around it, but also ensure that flora and fauna in each of these core hotspots for biodiversity are able to be ecologically connected through a very dense city. And so our conservation strategy as part of City in Nature is radically different from any other country in the world and very unique in its deployment of science, of policy, of interagency collaboration, of partnership with nature community and society as a whole. These efforts are already underway in Thompson and neighbouring Marymount. In recent years, forest restoration projects have started to bear fruit. As the town's greenery increases, so too will the chances of meeting wildlife. Do residents know how to live in harmony with nature? Our team, led by host Chen Ning, conducts a pop quiz to find out. Which of the following is not an example of responsible wildlife encounters? Which of the following are allowed as pets in Singapore? I have a pet terrapin that I want to release into the wild. Where can I release it? Is it you shouldn't? Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah, shouldn't. Yeah. Okay. They cannot survive. And that is right! Congratulations! With every correct answer, participants earn a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. They are tasked to solve the puzzle by the end of the day. So I was super impressed by all the participants because I imagine if I were one of them, I would have failed the test very badly. But they realised that no matter how many they have, they couldn't fill up the whole board. Whether you are amateur or pro, there's always something to learn out there. Hi. The empty spaces on the puzzle board represent knowledge gaps in society regarding what it means to be part of a city in nature. We offer them a chance to earn the missing pieces. The challenge, should they choose to accept it, is to go on an adventure trail at a nearby forest. Are you ready for the challenge? Yeah! Thank you. 
we're off to Thompson Nature Park. Opened in 2019, it's a ripe example of a secondary rainforest, where trees have started to grow over disused agricultural land. We saw about a few wells covered with bushes. Remind me of my kampong days. I used to stay in Abu Melayu, you see? Jalan you know, right? Nostalgic lah. Until the 1970s, this place used to be a Hainanese village known for its chickens and rambutans. Although most of it has been cleared, vestiges of civilization still remain. But the past is not the only thing that dwells in these woods. In the decades since the land was abandoned, life has flourished here. Thompson Nature Park is now home to numerous species of birds, insects and mammals, including the raffles banded langur. As they embark on their challenge, participants will learn about the efforts to protect these animals and their habitats. Do you know what animals are here? Wild boar. Wild boar, what about you? At every leg of their journey, Participants will be guided by green coaches from the Youth Stewards for Nature, a program run by the National Parks Board or NParks. Each coach will get participants to perform a task designed to teach them about a specific habitat in the forest. They are actually food sources for different kinds of animals. Upon completing the task, they will receive a piece of the jigsaw puzzle that's waiting for them back at Marymount Community Club. We're going to find my wild boars and my other animals. Let's go! Their first checkpoint, the Rambutan Trail. Yes, Rambutan trees still grow here and they're an important food source for animals like monkeys and birds. To ensure that the forest can continue sustaining the wildlife here for generations, NParks has been planting native tree saplings as part of its species recovery efforts. But sometimes these efforts are undone by animals such as the wild boar that are attracted to this oil palm plant, which is actually an invasive species. They also go after food scraps and rubbish that were left here by visitors to the park. In the course of their meal, these hungry creatures unwittingly dig up or trample on the young saplings. And when the wild pigs come here... Equipped with this new knowledge, our participants will now view rules like no feeding wildlife and no straying from the trail in a new light. They will also have a better appreciation for Singapore's habitat enhancement efforts. Try to guess which animal eat what kind of thing. The monkey oh. eats the rambutan leaves. Excellent. Oh. I walk more than her, so when I walk through Vision Park, of course you can see it's being up to care, it's being nurtured and looked after, but I haven't been to other parks, so I thought this would be a nice opportunity. That's the irony of the situation that even though I live right next to a park, I don't really go out much and go for walks and stuff, so um, I didn't know much about biodiversity and all this stuff. <laughs> There's not a lot of streams left in Singapore, so we should really protect the ones that we have remaining. Streams help to cool the forest, provide fresh drinking water for animals and are also home to a variety of aquatic species. Here, our participants will learn how they can do their part to protect them. And that is to admire them from a distance. Do not drink or fish out of the streams. They are also taught not to release any animals into the wild as some exotic species might pose a threat to our ecosystem. So do you have any ideas what does not belong in our Singapore streams? Salamander. Yes, perfect. Wow. What's been reinforced the whole journey today is know that we live alongside the biodiversity. They're not separate from us. Me personally, I haven't really paid attention. So I think bringing out more and more awareness among the community is going to help tremendously. Singapore is a city built in nature. So I think my takeaway is that basically learning about the animals, the forest, you know, the flora and fauna and everything and just appreciating and respecting where it all started. A lot of people will think that, oh, we can release our pets that we don't want into the wild and that is a real threat to the natural habitat. Nature should be kept as it is. Don't disturb them, don't introduce things that are not native and, and so forth. I think it's important. We have to be grateful for what nature gave us. 
So many disaster, trees cannot grow, uh, animals cannot survive. So we have to help them survive. It's like some sound. Oh, look, it's holding like, oh, something it's in eating, the hand. It's eating oh. something. I was telling her, I said, let's have a mother and daughter bonding, connecting with nature. There's something, you know, that we can venture and discover. So I invited her with me. We will go on trails regularly, actually, like at least once a month together. But we never notice specifics like insects or particular birds. Right now, you are in the grassland habitat. Listen to the audio recordings and identify the birds that you can see in this area as well. Okay? I think it's this. The barbet? Have you seen any here? Uh, at the moment for today, so far, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen many swiftlets flying. What kind of sound they make? Oh, they don't. <laughs> they, they do, but... <laughs> too far, too far. Too far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a radio DJ, so I should be very sensitive to sounds. But I'm very guilty to say, earlier on, I didn't score too well. I feel like I need to be more sensitive to my surroundings. Let's all just take a moment and absorb the sounds around the environment. <laughs> to the next one. Even though we were not able to see those insects or birds ourselves, we found out on names, the sounds that they make, their habitats, what they eat. That was the highlight. The sounds of nature, the smell of nature, it was really a wonderful experience. We learned a lot, awareness of uh, nature, animals, and how to respect and love them. Last check for Thank you. Okay, welcome to checkpoint five. So this is our wildlife encounter checkpoint. Okay, so firstly, we are on Langer Trail. This is the final checkpoint, the Langer Trail. Visitors flock here daily to get a glimpse of the crown jewel of the forest, the rare and revered Raffles Banded Langer. With trails like this, the community now has easier access to these unique animals, as well as other creatures which share this habitat. But this accessibility also comes with great responsibility. To remember that all these nature areas in Singapore shouldn't be taken for granted. The trees, the animals can't tell us what they feel. So we have to stand up for the wildlife and be their defenders, be their, be their voice. So in each envelope, there's a scenario. Okay, mm. based on how do you responsibly interact with wildlife. Mm. So you can explain, then we'll you get a colour, I'll give you a scenario, then you'll tell me how you act accordingly. Number, injured. What are you going to do? Call and parks. Very good. Do you remember the number? One eight zero zero four seven six one six zero zero. I think it's very important for young children to get in touch with nature, to appreciate nature, and also hopefully when they grow up, play a part in building, you know, the green in Singapore. I think my favorite part of the trail might be when I saw a bird on a branch, and it looked like one of the animals that we were supposed to discover on the trail. So yeah, I was very excited. I learned that we should respect wildlife because when we encounter wild animals, we shouldn't aggravate them because we might cause harm to them and we might also cause harm to ourselves. We need to respect them, give them space that we have taken from them and importantly is that we can coexist. Every animal, big or small, helps make our ecosystem vibrant and healthy. From pollinating plants and trees to regulating the food web and providing pest control. Conserving our rich biodiversity to ensure there's a continuation of these vital ecosystem services is a key part of Singapore's City in Nature plans. Let's take a look at the department that's driving some of these efforts. These folks are from NPARC's Wildlife Management and Outreach Department. A big part of their job is conducting research on where different species of animals can be found across Singapore and their population numbers. We actually help to look at potential wildlife conflicts across the whole of Singapore. This includes actually identifying the conflicts before they occur and actually mitigating them should they occur. We are also promoting the conservation of a very precious resource. In this case, it's biodiversity. We are telling the public how important biodiversity is. It's the uh, only thing that we have is not replaceable and to use it wisely and not to pollute or damage it. As part of its city and nature plans, 
the government will improve how Singapore looks after the health and welfare of wildlife residing in the city-state. As nature becomes more and more part of our daily lives, there is actually a need to know how to respond to it and how to actually better rehabilitate nature. And that's what we are working towards. There are certain animals that will need to be rescued and it is not an effort that NPARC is going at it alone. We are working with various partners to how best to do this. And it's a growing process and we are actually making good headway. I a jigsaw piece. Nice. Yes. Having completed all their tasks, participants return to Marymount Community Club with the puzzle pieces they collected at the different checkpoints. They leave the event with a fuller picture about what it means to be part of a city in nature. We did the challenges, we won the pieces, and then we come back here, and it just culminates into this big one, um, considering the fact that we're all from different groups and we don't know each other. So it's nice to see that this whole big picture of greenery coming together. During the checkpoints, that is where you gain the knowledge. We will definitely want to bring our family members to the park again to show them what we have learned and to go through with them whatever we have learned today to share the knowledge that we gained. I hope that the participants enjoy themselves. When they come back again, they are more attentive. They look out for the animals and the, the sounds, the sights that we share with them. And I also hope that they learn how to responsibly interact with our life. Guys, look, this is the first time we have ever seen a monitor lizard in my whole entire life. Wow, look, he's posing for yeah, us. Yeah, for me. <laughs> I'm very humbled by today's experience. It's amazing to see so many people who want to be involved and to be immersed in the environment as well with the most important person in your life. I've yet to do that with my mum. I hope I'll be able to do it before the end of 2022. It's a great day for uh, trekking. Uh, with my son, enjoy each other's company, right? And also take our minds off of, you know, the hustle and bustle of city life. Meeting a lot of uh, the volunteers that have a lot of knowledge about animals, uh, parks in Singapore. I learned a lot from them. When you go about your daily lives, you will have a chance to encounter some wild animals that is residing in Singapore. So please give them space, allow them to thrive in Singapore together with us. Bukit Panjang, a mature housing estate surrounded by lush greenery, much of which has grown on land where a village once stood. Here, nature greets you at every turn, providing a tranquil environment that nourishes the mind, body and soul. This has made Bukit Panjang an ideal location for our next City in Nature Challenge. Same drill, different town. What is the ratio of trees to people in Singapore? Seven to six. Seven to six, and that's option one. That is correct! Yeah. Okay. Residents race to fill up a jigsaw puzzle which identifies knowledge gaps. Soon, they'll go on a quest in search of answers to their unanswered questions. This tree is taller. In our previous challenge at Thompson, participants learned about the do's and don'ts of wildlife encounters. Here at Chestnut Nature Park, residents of Bukit Panjang will be introduced to other natural treasures that are equally precious, our native trees. Today, residents will learn how to identify some of them as well as the benefits they bring to society and the environment. Welcome to Chestnut Nature Park. I'll be your green coach for today. My name is Wei Jian. The green coaches for today are volunteers from Friends of Chestnut Nature Park. So you walk from the car park to here, you notice any temperature differences? Yeah. So this canopy really helps to block out the heat and the sunlight that gets to the forest floor. So it's really important. We only became interested in the last two years because of the pandemic. We started sitting nature park in Singapore. So before that, I think we were quite ignorant. Huh? And because of that uh, new discovery, new interest, we visit Chestnut Nature Park quite often actually because we live around the area. So far we've been there maybe more than eight times. So we just explore at will, uh, randomly, quite randomly. If you look around here, how many 
ficus trees do you see? 30. 30? So all that you see in front of you is probably one Malayan fig. Serious? One. Yes. <laughs> James and his wife, Xiao Lei, are meeting one of Bukit Panjang's oldest residents, the nearly century-old Malayan banyan, a type of fig tree native to Singapore. This living relic is the first checkpoint in our challenge. Here, residents learn about the symbiotic relationship the trees enjoy with wildlife. But this tree here is very important. Right, you can Animals on depend on trees for shelter and food. They return the favour by scattering pollen and seeds to help the trees reproduce. Participants are also let in on a little secret. The flora and fauna here are actually part of a larger ecosystem which extends beyond this forest. Chestnut Nature Park is actually a buffer park for the nearby Central Catchment Reserve. Buffer parks help take the pressure off our nature reserves by providing the community with more venues to enjoy nature. They also serve as corridors for animals to travel between green spaces. After learning about these buffer parks, participants make their way to the next checkpoint where they're about to get a tall order. They have to guess the height of this pulai tree one of the tallest trees in this forest. Hey, guess the height of this tree. Yes, hey, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, it's tall. Yeah. The idea is to help participants learn that a forest has multiple layers, with each layer playing host to different animals. The teams also learn to tell friend from foe. Uh, these are invasive plants. They actually deprive the native plants and animals from surviving. Our natural treasures are constantly under threat from exotic invasive species. Some of these plants were introduced during Singapore's colonial days. Others creeped in together with foreign plants that were imported into the country. Over the years, some species have grown out of control to the point that they crowd out or even strangle our native plants. I used to think that all trees are good for the environment, but now I learned there's uh, native trees and non-native trees are actually harmful. There's a lot of grasses that I thought that it was normally there, but actually it's not, it's invasive. But when you realize that it's harmful, you uh, keep a lookout. To give our rainforests a stronger fighting chance, NPARCs will intensify nature in buffer parks and nature reserves through the Forest Restoration Action Plan. Different layers of the forest that have been damaged will be replenished with native trees. And the greening will extend beyond the forest to our streetscapes too. These are nature ways, where shrubs and trees of varying heights and sizes are planted to mimic the different layers of a forest. By 2030, there will be 300 kilometers of nature ways across the island. There are at least four distinct ecological layers such that from a bird's eye view, there are actually various options. And as you know, different animals like to occupy different spaces with diversity of levels, layers of greenery in which you can occupy, it will hopefully attract a greater diversity of animals, pollinators of dispersers, who will then use it to cross from big green space to big green space. These nature ways will create immediate homes for birds and butterflies and allow them to move across different habitats. If you are looking at an area where big green space is totally isolated and there are no options for connectivity to another area, what you typically get is what we call an island effect, whereby everything there is contained. The animals can't move out and they won't be able to then spread their genetic material across uh, populations because they are able to make use of these nature ways, of these connectors that we have instituted, right? They can literally cross and then intermingle and strengthen their genetic strength. So the Nature Ways program is a very, very important program for us because it will turn Singapore, hopefully, within the next 10 years into a highly interconnected area. The final station in the trail is the Forest Restoration Area. Volunteers from Friends of Chestnut Nature Park have been looking after a cluster of native shrubs and trees that were planted here recently. 
these young saplings are constantly under siege by exotic weeds. We've asked our participants to remove these weeds and plant new trees. They are led by a mystery green coach. We will lose trees to disease, to development, unfortunately, because we have needs for housing and other purposes. But we aim to plant a million trees on top of what we lose. So we replace what we lose and then and only then we plant a million. It's the first time I'm doing tree planting and it really feels very fulfilling to, to plant a tree. Yeah, that's definitely my favourite part. I asked the person that was guiding us why we put the plants so close together. So he was telling us that actually only about 50% will grow up to be trees. It's close together because at the end of the day they want to form a canopy. We are contributing to rebuilding a part of Chestnut Nature Park. So that was exciting. If you pull it up, you'll find that it's connected for a very, 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 very long tree. A lot of them were very surprised when I told them that, oh, look, this patch of green over here is actually non-native species. And even though it looks very nice and green, it doesn't have a canopy. So the idea of forest restoration means we are trying to bring back a forest. We're trying to bring back the structure of a forest so that it can create more habitats for wildlife. The squirrel was just following us. Oh, you see? Yeah, it kept, it kept coming. So today, I met Natasha and Rauf, and this is their third time to Chestnut Nature Park. The first time with their baby. When I first saw them and their baby, I was a little worried because carrying a baby to walk this trail is definitely not easy at all, especially at the uh, checkpoint of planting and weeding. Because Rauf was carrying the baby, so Natasha was all alone doing the planting, but that didn't stop her at all. In fact, she gave her 100%. So standing by the side, I was very amazed by her strength. This is mummy hard at work. Yeah, hey, you're doing great. <laughs> I saw it was mostly her doing the work because I was carrying the baby. So I think she did a very good job. Her form and her posture was really well. <laughs> it was easier than I thought. I think because they taught the right technique. But it's nice because you know you get to hold the soil. And I feel like you know when you're so used to playing with computers and all that, it's very nice once in a while to get down and plant something. And yeah, it felt nice, like connecting mm. with nature all over again. The trees planted today will contribute towards the One Million Trees movement. Under this plan, a million new trees will be planted by 2030. Singapore has already met a third of this target with over 320,000 trees planted as of February 2022. Trees are nature-based solutions to mitigate climate change. They improve air quality and help reduce the urban heat island effect by cooling down temperatures. Trees have ecosystem functions. So by planting as diverse as possible and also planting native trees. Native trees support native pollinators, native dispersers as well. So they actually go beyond that and it really helps us in our species recovery program. In this environment, you see there are a lot of trees. You can hear the straw-headed bubu in the background, a critically endangered bird as well. So trees actually provide habitats for a lot of our native species as well. We hope to involve as many Singaporeans as possible. Because to be a city in nature, we need everyone to have that biophilic mindset. Hope that every Singaporean, families, come together, plant trees together, and that becomes almost like a rite of passage uh, of every Singaporean. And in that sense of ownership, that stake that they have in the green city, the city nature around them, I think is also an important part of the One Million Trees movement. <laughs> In completing this challenge, participants leave Chestnut Nature Park with more than just puzzle pieces. They return home with newfound knowledge and a deeper connection with the nature that surrounds them. I was very heartened to see that the participants were actively asking questions. They were really interested to know more about nature and environment around them. So I think that's really, you know, the kind of habit that we should have as well towards the, our surroundings. I think today is a first step for them to appreciate that nature is wild 
and nature is very rich in biodiversity. And hopefully, as we go towards a vision of city in nature, people will want to be near green spaces and to appreciate the kind of biodiversity that is present in this kind of green spaces. Through all this, our relationship with nature has definitely improved a lot and uh, we hope to nurture it further. Whatever we planted today, in 10, 20 years time, it will grow and that's what our children will see. And I think it's important that you know, there is enough forest around when the next generation grows up for them to enjoy the, the nature and being able to sustain it. It's Singapore's first eco-town, known for its clean and vibrant waterways and lush greenery integrated into its urban environment bringing nature closer to residents. This is Pongol, and it's the setting of our next CNA Green Plan Challenge. Today, our first stop is the famed Oasis Terraces. It's the Housing and Development Board's first new generation neighbourhood centre, a one-stop destination for a range of services where you can eat, shop and see a doctor. It's also one of the most iconic green buildings in the town. It boasts of sustainable features, like a well-ventilated community plaza, specially designed to bring in natural light and the breeze. Fans and lights are triggered by motion sensors to save energy and cascading green terraces work to cool down the building and help reduce urban heat. All these make the centre an ideal venue for residents to begin their journey of discovery. This time, our jigsaw experiment has been tweaked to find out how much residents know about the green features in their town. The floating wetlands in Pongo have been adapted for use at an island. Name the island. Coney Island. Coney Island is wrong! We know each other through running and also heat. Those high intensity are training. Every week we actually run in Pongo. I think we are pretty competitive. I think most of the questions we raise our hand to participate. But I think there are people who raise their hands faster than us. <laughs> it would take more than fast fingers to complete this challenge. Participants will be sent on a 4km trail around the neighbourhood. Along the way, they will have to hunt for sustainable engineering innovations hidden across the town. This will put their patience and resolve to the test. They'll have some help. They will be guided by green coaches from the Friends of Our Heartlands Network, a group of volunteers under the Housing and Development Board. Welcome to the community garden. This is the Muhiba Garden, the first checkpoint. With a large variety of plants and even fruit trees, it's a haven for urban biodiversity. Situated six storeys above ground, it's proof that the sky's not the limit. This rooftop community garden was designed to bring residents of Pungol together through gardening, while giving them a sense of ownership in their living environment. Participants have to identify and take pictures of the unique plants and trees planted here. Before we moved to Pongol, we were in other places of Singapore. We felt Pongol, the area, full of buildings. Everywhere like I go, I see uh, buildings. One thing I saw different was like, they, they grow uh, plants in the rooftop. So in that way, we have the nature along with the buildings. So it's nice. You're still ready or not? Yeah, hey, yeah. The tree right, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. the one in green. Rooftops are not the only places in Pongo where you can see examples of nature being woven into the urban fabric. You can witness this along the waterways too. Welcome to Checkpoint 2. This is the Wave Bridge. Eh? At the Wave Bridge, Participants are introduced to special residents living along the banks of Pongol Waterway. 
They don't live in flats. And they aren't fish or turtles. They are freshwater tolerant mangroves and they were specially cultivated here by HDB. Besides beautifying the waterways, these mangroves act as natural filters that improve water quality by up to 30%. They also help capture carbon and attract a wide spectrum of biodiversity. Now we understand so many of mangroves and their functionality. This is quite interesting and refreshing to know that. There are so many other things or places to discover about Singapore. It's just that probably need more effort to go and read up about it. The next checkpoint is Tree Lodge at Pongol. It's Singapore's first public housing development with eco-friendly features. These include a rainwater collection system, recycle bins on every floor, energy-saving lighting and abundant cycling racks to encourage green commuting. Oh, what's this? Oh, I think this is explaining the design of these places. The teams discover that the flats here are orientated towards the southwest to face the prevailing northeast winds. This is to maximize natural lighting and ventilation to help mitigate the urban heat island effect. We test participants on their knowledge of Tree Lodge's biophilic design. Point out the direction of the Tree Lodge. The north Yeah. Not quite. Because as we mentioned earlier, all the blocks are here to take advantage of the northeastern winds. Southwest. It's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Every checkpoint we learn different things. But I think as the resident of a HDB flat, I, I would think that maybe three lots give me a deeper impression. I didn't know that there's so much thing in HDB. Congo will be a place that we are proud to stay in, even the all the development. It has a balance of everything. Coming from the north, okay. the southeast. Yeah. We are staying in a more mature estate, so we don't get to enjoy what these uh, new residents in Pongol actually get to enjoy, like collecting of the rainwater. If it really opens up our eyes, you know, we thought more of flats basically. Another urban area with cooler flats, but when we came here, I think we saw the other part of Singapore. More greenery, more trees and yeah. buildings. We are proud that actually yeah. Singapore is going towards this way so that our future generation can actually enjoy this as much as well. Congratulations, you've done well. Yay. We live so near each other. So like walking along the waterway and all is, is actually something that we do occasionally because we both like being outdoors and surrounded by greenery. But today, we actually got to learn more details about the nature that's around us versus when we just do our own walks. Biodiversity this area, meaning birds, butterflies, dragonflies, come here. With somebody to tell us more in depth, it really matters and that really made me, made me feel like I'm living in a very special place. This is the final pit stop and it's where teams can check out a unique engineering innovation that was invented and patented by HDB. The floating wetlands. Inspired by the honeycomb, they are made of hexagon-shaped modules that can be easily assembled or dismantled anywhere. When put together, they form strong and stable green islands which allow biodiversity to thrive in the waterways. I think it's a very new thing. Like, I'm not sure like many people in Pongol knows about this wetland floating, but actually this is very good in terms of expanding the nature. I hope that participants will appreciate the waterway which act as an outdoor classroom, enabling them to learn and appreciate the fauna in their shared living environment. I believe these lessons are important as they allow residents to appreciate how engineering innovations and nature can go hand in hand to bring about an environment where biodiversity is Drive. Congo is my home, then there are so many plants around and all this really brought nature to home, that which really makes us happier. Even on weekends when we come, really makes us so much more relaxed. So, thank you. Thank you. Innovation, a biophilic mindset and community spirit. These are the secrets to what makes Pongo an eco-town 
which our participants uncovered in the course of their challenge, along with their puzzle pieces. It's made me appreciate the estate even more. With Pongo being a relatively new town, we've had the benefit of urban planning where the nature has been built into the town. It's a good step that we are moving towards, incorporating a lot of these sustainability initiatives and eco-friendly features, integrating it into our daily lives. I think uh, after this trail, I noticed that Pongo is a place of nature. You're really close to greenery landscape and make yourself feel very fresh in the environment. And hope it can be copied into other towns as well to make living more beautiful. My impression is that urban and nature can coexist and I think that's very important. Pongol is a good case study of how needs such as housing and transport can be balanced with sustaining a green haven shared by the community and our native flora and fauna. Singapore's conservation and development challenge is particularly acute and one which makes us focus our minds on how to strike the right equilibrium. And that equilibrium is always a dynamic and moving one. Striking that delicate balance requires a continuous process of engagement, but also the application of science. Now, for example, we are now engaging in ecological profiling exercise, or EPE, partnering academics, researchers, environmentalists, in order to understand each green space in Singapore and what it means for us. In our urban city, our bastions of biodiversity are within the heart of the city. And to ensure that there is ecological connectivity, you have to traverse urban spaces. Over the next decade, the lessons learned from Pongol would be gradually applied to other parts of the island in new and creative ways. One example is in Bidadari, an upcoming housing estate. It's envisioned to be a tranquil urban oasis where residents can live, relax and connect with family and friends in a garden-like setting. Residents here will soon enjoy easy access to nature with six kilometres worth of trails connecting them to a variety of habitats and numerous species of plants and animals. The public housing developments in Bidadari also harness the elements of nature wherever possible to promote sustainable living through an array of equal features. We've capitalised on Bidadari's rolling green rich heritage and convenient transport connections. We have lush landscaping and green spaces integrated within our public housing development. With this initiative, residents in Bidadari is able to enjoy nature at their doorsteps. Be it in Bidadari or any part of Singapore, soon you will no longer be able to tell where the green ends and the urban begins. Our three challenges in Thompson, Bukit Panjang and Pongol gave residents a taste of this new reality. Vibrant and healthy habitats teeming with life. Interconnected green spaces that can be enjoyed for generations. And the community living in harmony with nature as one large ecosystem. I feel that sometimes we are living in a concrete jungle. So City in Nature is bringing nature into our concrete jungle. The warmth and more comfortable living environment, at least for us living in flats. It's important that enough forests around, when the next generation grows up, for them to enjoy the nature, being able to sustain it. We live alongside the biodiversity. They are not separate from us. This essential part that biodiversity plays in the city of Singapore. So I think Bringing out more and more awareness among the community is going to help tremendously. We all have a part to play in building a city in nature. I'm extremely proud of all contestants from the three towns and I hope they'll go forth and share what they have learned with their friends and family. In applying and spreading this knowledge, they will plant the seeds for a sustainable future. It's like the feel of the stretching and the yawning of the day.
Chunning, for one, has already selected somebody to share her green journey with. Her mum. Join us again next week for another episode of the CNA Green Plan Challenge. In the meantime, we would like to congratulate the residents of Bukit Panjang. Your town is the winner of the CNA Green Plan Online Challenge City in Nature Edition. Thank you for sharing stories of your green journeys with us. The future is bright.